So, the last time you were on this show, which was about a year ago, uh, you were asked the question whether you plan to visit the World Culture Gallery. And uh, I have done. You have done. I have done. Well, this is, this this is, is brilliant. This is brilliant. Uh, masks. I like masks. Those of you who have ever seen one of my story shows will know how much I like masks. I make big masks and little men. It's got lovely masks in the, uh, in the RAM. But the mask they remind me of are the ones in the British Museum. I've spent many a happy hour looking, it has to be said, at the mask. Do you know the Aztec mask? The one of Kuzi Kotl, I can never pronounce his name. It's the Aztec um, smoking mirror god, smoking mirror. So he's the jaguar god. He's the black creator. So he's the one they sacrificed 10,000 people a week. Uh, once a year, the Aztecs would sacrifice 10,000 people in a weekend to a god. And he's that god. And in the British Museum, but they have another version of it in the Ram, and I have seen it there. They have this wonderful jade skull that is a skull. And you can sit there and you could look at these eyes. And this was the skull that the priest wore when he was sacrificing God knows how many people. But was also itself a human skull. So you've got all these really dark energies, these dark stories going off this mask. And I remember last time I was in the Ram, they don't have a full Aztec mask, but they have some of those kind of ritual masks that you look, they look back at you and you sit there thinking, oh, I wonder what you've seen. Because a good mask makes you always wonder what it's seen. Because it looks at you with real living eyes. Um, which I sort of hope, yeah. Which is also what I think stories do, actually. A, story, a good story. If you hear a good old story, you wonder who else has heard the story and you can hear all the history should carry you along in the story. So do you, do you think there could be more stories just based on looking at all the masks in, in the room? Oh, yeah, certainly. Certainly. I mean, I'm... the thing is with stories, it's for me, I mean, a good mask tells its own story in a sense, because it's looking at you with its history. It's looking at you with the story. And uh, so uh, as an artist, when I've got my artist head on, I would tend to respond to that by not telling the story of that mask, but by telling a story that was doing the same game, looking at you with a history. Um, uh, So I'm always very indirect in my response to these kind kind of things. Um, The stuff that we do that is closest to being directly inspired by looking at masks in the ram or going to the British Museum and looking at stuff would be the monster carnival stuff we do, which is all about the monsters. So that, that's the one where we let the masks free from the stories and they can tell their own stories, so we let the monsters free. So we have uh, Nosferatu come and offer to... Um, he offers immortality if you allow him to take your soul away and all kinds of things like that. And we have that as a separate sideshow. We do it as a festival sideshow and we're developing even as we speak a theatre show on it so you never know next year you might be able to come to the monster carnival the theatre show um, and bid with Nosferatu (laughs) sell your soul see how high you can go (laughs) so Brian we end that with the devil being summoned and I come in and there's a very large devil um, and offer to end the world there and then if anybody will just hold hands with me (laughs) (laughs) they do sometimes (laughs) Okay. Well, it's good we could see the funny side. And on that thing, we better end. (laughs) It is a comedy festival. It is a comedy festival. You're part of. I am part of. Just to remind us of the dates again. Third of February. Third of February. And it is funny. I mean, not all my pieces are funny. Some of them are thinky, but three or four of them. Three or four of them. Yeah, I mean, there's comedy elements to all of them. But I mean, you're not coming because you think it's going to be a hoot. But to be honest with you, I think that people get that. I'm part of a comedy festival. I'm part of a stand-up festival, but. Yeah. I'm sure it's going to work fine. Yeah. Well, it will work on the going backwards because we're going backwards in time. You'll feel like a time traveller. So ideas that you know. So, for instance, just one last, the ideas of democracy and of a mixed constitution. Do you know where they came from? Well, we think ancient Greece. No, it's ancient Rome. It's Cicero. It's one particular book. Cicero writes this book called The Republic, which has funny elements, but it's also the book which is a lament, really. Rome is about to become an empire, and he writes this incredible evocation about what, how beautiful Rome was, and it was so beautiful that it becomes the text that is used to establish British liberal constitution and then American constitution. So it's invented at a certain time by a man who loses his life over the invention of it. And he does it in the sequence of kind of funny stories about the origins of Rome. 
So with material like that, you can't go wrong, really. But he loses his life. Yeah, he loses his life just afterwards. Because he loses his life because he's caught up... Cicero is caught up in the power struggle. That is the beginning of the Roman Empire. So, is the, so he's actually killed by Marcus... by Mark Antony. Um, he's judicially murdered by Mark Antony. And he's done that because he's... It's as He does this series of speeches called the Philippique who are attacking Mark Antony. But he's attacking him for because he's betraying this constitution. And at the same time, he's writing this book, eulogising through a sequence of quite funny stories about turnips and all kinds of things, the Roman constitution, which then enshrines... which then becomes the working text for the... For, for, liberal democratic constitution the idea of mixed authorities the idea that you have a president you have a, an assembly an executive government and an electorship and that they're all separate and they all have different roles is datable to cicero okay so it comes in at a certain time so what you can do and what i do in the stand-up show one of the things i do in the stand-up show is to show you how ideas that you thought you knew very well and were perhaps a little boring and you lived with came in were very exciting quite funny and cost people their lives so you kind of make um, history terribly dramatic. Well, yes. Which is what I do in the stand-up show. And you're going to fit all of this into two hours? Easy peasy. OK. Easy peasy. <laughs> and the rehearsals, as it were, are on, on, on your show? Oh, they're on, on the Phonic. show, yeah. Well, if, it, yes, sir. if you're particularly unlucky, if you go down to the meadows every afternoon, I'm usually there shouting. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Or on, on Phonic FM. Or on Phonic FM on... 106.8. 106.8, 9 till 10. OK. Brilliant. On a Thursday. On a Thursday. And Just before um, you. If you. If you miss Melvin Bragg, he's got a very good archive, by the way. Yeah. So that's no problem at all. Trouble is, you see, that distinction between high culture and everything it annoys me so much that I, I'm not... <clears throat> no. OK. I'm, well, here is, um, by chance, the, um, the Northcott Theatre also has a performance of Copacabana. Oh, so lovely. I thought that would be good music to get us back to um, musical daytime radio. So uh, coming up, for, um, this is um, a remix on Barry, Barry Manilow. <laughs> 